It's Monday Night Football at Mile High as the Denver Broncos sitting at 3-3 host their division rival in the 6-1 Portland River Hogs, who look to take full control of the AFC West while Demarius Thomas Von Miller and the Broncos try to keep their division hopes alive. Opening drive on second, Nate Patrick Mahomes connects with Travis Kelsey for the 13-yard gain in first down. Three plays later, third one, and Brandon Oliver takes the give, gets the one he needs, plus seven more into Denver territory. Then next play, Mahomes with the play fake rolls out to his right and finds a wide open long windborn who makes the catch turns up field accelerating like an 81 volvo and is brought down at the bronco 17 two plays later mahomes looking to throw and ends up dumping short to brandon oliver who spins away from a tackler then spins off of a tackler to set up first and goal where two plays later it's daryl williams taking it right up the middle for the one yard score and the river hogs jump out to the quick seven nothing lead denver's opening driving on their first play they give to royce freeman who picks up an easy 11 yards three plays later river Hogs with a chance to stop, but Keenum dumps off to Freeman, who gets the edge and picks up eight in a first down. Two plays later this time, and it's Freeman again for the first down, picking up nine into Portland territory. Three plays later, third and five, and Keenum squeezes it into butt for seven yards and a first down. Three plays later, again, third and five, and this time Keenum fires it into butt for the 17-yard catch to set up first and goal. And two plays later, a four-yard touchdown pass to Demarius Thomas caps off a 14-play, 79-yard drive that takes just over seven minutes off the clock and ties things up at seven. Fast forward to mid-second quarter now and on second and seven, Mahomes fits one into Travis Kelsey who takes it down to the Bronco 26 for 23 yards. Then on third and two, the inside give to Oliver picks up six and another Portland first down. Next play, Mahomes looking to throw and fires to Sammy Watkins. It looks like a touchdown, but the River Hogs have to settle for first and goal from the one where two plays later, Spencer Ware takes the toss and runs through a Bronco tackler into the end zone for the one yard score and the River Hogs go back up by seven but the lead wouldn't last long as on the Broncos first play Royce Freeman has a huge hole picking up 17 and a first down then two plays later the give again goes to Freeman who finds a lane spins off one tackler spins off another tackler the other way becoming a human tornado of all mad misery as he takes it 55 yards to the house and just like that the score is once again tied at 14 River Hogs looking to respond and on their first play Mahomes loads up and fires deep for Tyreek Hill who makes the catch taking it down inside the Bronco 25 for 48 yards. But then on third and four from the six with the clock ticking down, Mahomes has Kelsey wide open but fires it straight into the ground. River Hogs send out Harrison Butker who is good from 23 and the River Hogs head into half with a 17-14 lead. Opening drive of the third and Freeman goes right back to work as he has a huge hole on his way to a 23-yard run. Then three plays later now in Portland territory and it's Freeman getting outside and picking up nine more on the ground. Three plays later again second six Keenum fakes to Freeman then says nope 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 and runs right into the arms of Justin Houston for the sack and on third and 13 it's more of the same as Kendall Fuller blitzes and puts Keenum in the dirt Broncos send out Brandon McManus for the 54 yard field goal but it doesn't have enough and Denver comes away with nothing Portland's turn now but on their first play Mahomes fakes looks to throw but gets hit and fumbles Broncos are right there but Portland lucky to get it back and on fourth and five Portland would have to punt it away Dustin Colquitt gets away a good one that's going to bounce at the two yard line come back and hit a Bronco zombie and the River Hogs recover and set up at the 12 it takes only two plays for Portland to put it in the end zone as Brandon Oliver scores from seven yards out to push the River Hog lead to 10. Broncos need to respond and how else than to feed Royce Freeman who takes it through a gaping hole for another big run of 32 yards into Portland territory but then on third and two Denver goes back to Freeman but Justin Houston shuts the door for a loss of one and McManus from 52 two yards this time does have the leg and cuts the lead back to seven but then second play of the ensuing drive Mahomes looking to throw and fires to Tyreek Hill he makes the catch and is off to the races and no one's gonna catch the cheetah 63 yard touchdown and 53 seconds later the River Hogs push it to 31 17 Broncos needing a response but faced with a third and 11 Keenum looking to throw steps up and fires deep but it's free agent signing Ken Crawley who goes up and comes down with the ball for the interception and the River Hogs with a 14 point lead take right back over. Third quarter winding down and on third and one Spencer Ware picks up three to move the chains. Five plays later fourth quarter now and on third and eight Mahomes looking to throw stands in and fires to Tyreek Hill who makes 
the 16-yard catch to convert. Three plays later, again third down. Mahomes looking to throw, starts to scramble before dumping to Brandon Oliver, who has plenty of room and skates out of bounds for 12 and a first down. Next play, and it's Oliver again, this time on the ground as he picks up nine down to the Denver 10. And on second and goal from the seven, Mahomes takes the deep drop back and fires into the end zone to Travis Kelsey for the seven-yard score. And what was a three-point game at half becomes a 21-point River Hog lead with just 10 minutes to go in the fourth. Denver's turn now, and on third and 15, Keenum hits Demarius Thomas for 13 yards on the slant, bringing up fourth and two, where Keenum tries to fire quick to Emmanuel Sanders, but it's nearly picked off by Anthony Hitchens, and Portland takes over. Then on third and nine, Mahomes looks to throw and has Travis Kelsey, but is wild and overthrows him. Harrison Butker comes on and from 47 yards, tacks on another field goal to make it 41-17. Denver would add a meaningless field goal, but the Broncos get outscored 24-6 in the second half of the 21-point defeat. Royce Freeman does go off for 234 yards rushing, but the Denver passing game was non-existent as they only throw for 136 yards. Meanwhile, on the other side, Patrick Mahomes throws for 329 yards and the two scores. Portland moves to 7-1 and one and heads into their bye three and a half games up on Denver, who will face the Chargers next week in a borderline must-win game in Los Angeles. All right, guys, so an interesting game there. Things started out really slow, but then got kind of crazy at the end of the first half, and then that kind of carried over into the third quarter as well. Ton of back and forth, but in the end, we end up pulling away and pick up the big win to move to 7-1. and one. Nice to have a good offensive game after the last couple weeks of only scoring 20 and then 10 before that also. But following this game, we do head into our bye week, so we have a bit more information to cover. So we're going to jump right into that, starting with negotiations where we had one in Week 8 with Andrew Wiley. The fair offer for him was two years, 4.16 million with one mil guaranteed. And that is exactly what I offered him. But he declined saying, nice offer, just need to improve the bonus now. So the negotiations carried over into week nine where we bumped the bonus up to 1.2 million guaranteed and signed him up. Then for week nine, we had Justin Hamilton, who's our backup right in. And the fair offer for him was exactly what you see him signing for there. And then lastly, we had Jordan Lucas, who is a third string strong safety. And he had a similar fair offer to Hamilton, which was a one-year $740,000 deal with 30 k of that guaranteed, but we declined and withdrew negotiations with him, so he's going to hit free agency. Moving on to scouting, there were no new draft stories in week eight, and looking at the players added to the draft board, we have tight end Tyrone Whittington out of Pittsburgh. Then below him, we have three second-round projections in Dalton Hargrove, a right tackle, Lindsey Odom, a cornerback, and then Lewis Ellsworth, a left tackle out of Maine, who is only a third-round true talent. And then lastly, we have Cambrell Woods, another right tackle out of Delaware State. Then moving to week nine, we did have a draft tweet from Todd McShay, which reads, Vaughn Quinn's physical skills are obvious, but now big questions about his attitude. And this was one of those stories where the player ends up disappearing from scouting. So like last season, we're just going to jot his name down and we'll look for him again when he reappears. But added to the draft board during the bye was right tackle Scott Eaches, who's a first round projection and true talent. Then we have Ladarius Myers, who's a second round projection but a third round true talent at middle linebacker and then lastly we have Frank Norman a power rusher left end who is a fourth round projection as well as true talent so now we start to go around the league which is going to be formatted a bit differently because of the bye but as always we start with league scores and in week eight things kicked off with the Eagles beating the Jets 28-7 on Thursday night Patriots beat the Giants 24-7 Titans get their first win over the Colts winning 21-14 Bills go to overtime but take down the Texans 27 27- 21. Redskins win 31 20 over the Cowboys. Steelers easily handled the Browns 41 21. Bengals upset the Ravens in dominating fashion 28 7. Saints beat the Panthers 21 16. Chargers 24 17 over the lowly Raiders. Buccaneers win 33 21 over the 49ers. Bears beat the Cardinals 21 13. And the Vikings pick up their first win of the season over the Packers on Sunday night while the world was witness to a mile high massacre on Monday night, which is where Week 8's AFC Offensive Player of the Week played as Royce Freeman of the Broncos takes home the award. Freeman also took home the award when we played in Denver on Monday night last season and eclipsed his mark of 198 yards in that game, rushing for 234 yards. Freeman added 34 yards receiving, but it wasn't enough as the Broncos got the godfather treatment, losing 41-20 on Monday night. On the NFC side, Kirk Cousins took home the award for Week 8. Cousins led the Vikings to their first win of the season, throwing for 238 yards. 
yards and three touchdowns on 21 of 33 passing. This is Cousins' second player of the week award of our franchise, also winning in week 16 of last season. On the defensive side, Artie Burns of the Steelers is the week 8 AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Burns had four tackles and picked off two of Baker Mayfield's four interceptions, returning one for a touchdown. Burns' big day helped the Steelers dominate the Browns 41-21. And then on the NFC side, safety Eric Reed takes home the Week 8 Defensive Player of the Week. Reed was in on nine tackles, eight of which were solo. Reed also forced a fumble and picked off a Drew Brees pass. However, the Panthers couldn't pull out the win, losing 21-16 to the Saints. And now moving on to Week 9, the Ravens bounce back from their loss to the Bengals with a 27-24 win in Miami. Moving to Sunday, the Redskins also eked out a victory, taking down the Bills 27-21 in overtime. One week after picking up their first wins, the Vikings and Titans both fall. Lions beat the 49ers. Panthers take down the Colts. Texans over the Bucks 24-20. Raiders get a nice win over the Bears 28-7. Seahawks beat the Cards at home. Rams beat the Bengals by 21. Chargers handle the Broncos, so a rough video for the Donkeys. Saints get a huge win over the first place Falcons on Sunday night to split the season series. And on Monday night, the Browns drop Scott Cleveland and the Patriots 34-27. Cowboys, Packers, Jets, Eagles, and Steelers all joined us with the week off. So taking a look at the AFC standings, the East sees the Bills with a two-game lead over the second place Dolphins. In the North, the Steelers have now taken over first place at 5-3 over the 5-3-1 Ravens. Things have tightened up in the South with the 5-2 Texans now just a game back of the first place Jaguars. And then in the West, the Chargers have made a bit of a push to 5-3, and three, but are still two games back of us as we currently hold the number one seed in the AFC. On the NFC side, the East looks to be a heck of a race down the stretch with the Redskins currently in first at 6-2, and two, but the Eagles and Cowboys just a game behind at 5-3. and three. Lions lead the North at 5-2-1 and one over the 5-4 and four Bears. The South is similar to the East with both the Saints and Falcons tied at the top at 6-2 and two, with the Panthers in third but only a game back at 5-3. and three. Then out West, the Rams at 7-1 and one are the only team over 500 and looked poised to win that division. Winning the AFC Offensive Player of the Week for Week 9 was Blake Bortles of the Jaguars. Bortles did throw three interceptions but made up for it by throwing for 356 yards and five touchdowns which still put his quarterback rating over 100 at 104.8. Bortles' big day helped his Jaguars move to 6-2 by beating the Titans 42-28. As for the NFC, Alex Smith takes home the award in Week 9. Smith also had the turnover bug throwing two interceptions but it was Smith's 318 yards passing and four touchdowns touchdown passes, including the game winner in overtime that were the difference in the Redskins 27-21 win over Buffalo. As for the defensive side, Michael Pierce was the AFC player of the week. The Ravens defensive tackle did just about everything on Thursday night as he was in on six tackles, one for loss, had three sacks of Dolphins quarterback Ryan Tannehill and also forced and recovered a fumble. Pierce's huge night helped the Ravens take down Miami 27-24. And for the NFC, we go from Miami to Hollywood where Rams linebacker Mark Barron is the week nine winner. Barron was in on 11 tackles, had one for loss, sacked Andy Dalton once, and also forced a fumble as the Rams were easily able to handle the Bengals 35-14 in Los Angeles. And then finally on to the league leaders, Jared Goff still has a hold of the passer rating lead with his 114.3 mark. With the week off, Deshaun Watson moves in front of Patrick Mahomes with his 2,612 yards passing. And then lastly, Blake Bortles leads the way in passing touchdowns with 23 through eight games. On to the rushers, we see the same three leaders as Todd Gurley is just 122 yards shy of the 1,000-yard mark in rushing yards. Gurley also continues to lead the way in rushing touchdowns with eight, but is tied with Bills running back Alex Collins. And then Kareem Hunt with 737 yards on 120 carries leads the way with his 6.1 average. For the first time since week 15 of last season, a non-packer leads the way in receptions, although it does come with a catch, no pun intended. Michael Crabtree leads the way with 54 but is tied with the Texans DeAndre Hopkins and the Packers rookie Curtis Gorin. Despite the bye week, our own Tyreek Hill still easily leads the league in receiving yards with 863 on the year. And then Cooper Cup with eight receiving touchdowns continues to lead the way there. And then lastly, the defensive leaders where we see another river hog in linebacker Anthony Hitchens who leads the league with 74 combined tackles. Bill's Jerry Hughes enters the picture as he now holds the top spot in sacks with eight and a half on the year. And then as he has all year long, 
long, Patrick Peterson continues to sit atop the interception leaderboard with five. And then as we wrap up with the league schedule for next week, things start with the three and five Broncos headed to Indy on Thursday night. Moving to Sunday, the Seahawks travel to Atlanta. The Dolphins head to first place Buffalo. Packers at Lions. Patriots at Eagles. Redskins head to New York for a divisional battle. Jets at Steelers. Saints at Cowboys in a big NFC game. Bucks at Jaguars in a Florida matchup. Panthers at 49ers. Oilers, Texans, and Houston. We go on the road looking for a season sweep of the Raiders for the second consecutive season. On Sunday night, the Rams head to Cleveland looking to continue their winning ways. And on Monday night, the Vikings, who seemingly play in primetime every single week, head to Los Angeles to play in front of a couple thousand fans as they take on the Chargers. But that's going to do it for both weeks eight and nine, guys. We'll be heading into week 10 next video as we take on the Raiders, who we've had a lot of good luck against in the franchise series thus far. We beat them 45-20 and 27-7 last year, and then also took them down 41-31 in week two of this season. So hope to see you guys back for that. As always, I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to watch me play and discuss my franchise. Hope you guys enjoyed everything, and until next time, thanks for watching.